All right, so I'm just gonna jump over here. So this is just like intro to what I'm talking about. By the way, this is just purely, I'm just interested in it's kind of fun. This is not like you're not gonna learn anything other than maybe I'm an idiot, but other than that, it's just fun. Um, so there's a thing that I've written and I've used actually quite in, in a number of projects, um, personal and, sorry? Zoom. Oh, and bigger than. Thank you. <laughs> no. um, I've used this in a number of personal projects and uh, professional legitimate money making ones. Well, I don't know, money making, who knows? You don't have to make money to be a company, do you? Um, anyway, so this is basically if you ever have um, the requirement to run code effectively uh, that your users give you, um, but obviously you don't want to run real code because they're your users and they're untrustworthy inherently, um, but you, you want to be able to let them you know, do some kind of code but not break everything. Um, I wrote this little language that's like similar to JavaScript in, in many ways, uh, but a little bit more simple. I thought, hey, I may as well make it something kind of fun that I, like, you know, well, I, sometimes I'm like, oh, that's kind of annoying in JavaScript. I'll have to try and not do that in this language. Uh, so it's pretty basic, like um, implicit returns. Uh, if anyone's, who here knows what implicit returns are? Yeah, cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> in non-JavaScript languages. Um, by the way, uh, there are other languages. Uh, <laughs> they're not that good. Um, but anyway, in non-JavaScript languages. Actually, sorry, who here knows what an arrow function is? Oh, you all know what an implicit return is. So you know when you go like, you go like x, x, like that? You're not saying return, it just returns. So the last, basically the last uh, evaluated token is the thing that gets returned. So if you go like this, if you go x, comma, like if you put like a there or whatever, uh, that'll throw, obviously. But if you go like foo, zoom in. Oh my god. <laughs> Everyone can read that, surely. Yeah. All right, cool. So in this sort of situation, I'm sure that'll probably pass bad because our syntax is a bit shit, but anyway. Um, and then you do that, and then the New York implicit returns. You know what, bad example. Um, anyway. <laughs> In Presh, uh, everything's an implicit return. There's no such thing as an explicit return, so uh, that obviously has some implications like um, if statements don't really make any sense, you can't like return inside an if, uh, you know. So everything's like, it has to be like a, a full proper expression. So you use ternaries to do ifs, uh, stuff like that. Anyway, so I'm using this in, the, in a lot of stuff, and I'd totally switch to a tab, that, but I can't because it'll you'll crash my server. Um, it's fine. Anyway, I, I, last time I talked, I think, maybe, I was saying that I wrote a, 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 um, bit, like a crypto trading bot, uh, and it wasn't making any money. Um, now it's like, well, I mean, the, the market's crashed, so it's still not really making any money, but it's, it's, doing, it's doing well compared to the market, which is pretty good. Um, but anyway, I, I wrote my rules in Presh, so my buy-sell rules, so I obviously have at least some level of confidence since I have my own money writing on the expressions actually evaluating. Uh, I did kind of have a friend on my bot, he has a, a, a copy of my bot, and there was a bug in my press and it wouldn't sell anything over 5% profit. <laughs> Oops. Uh, I fixed that, that's all good. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm actually uh, currently in my spare time writing a uh, trading bot as a service. So basically, you can come along to my service, sign up, you have your own exchange, so I don't want to deal with your money at all. Obviously, there's legal implications that I can't be bothered dealing with. Um, but you can just give me, give me a, your uh, trading API private key. That's fine, surely. <laughs> 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 and then you can um, write your own bot, your own like trading logic in Presh. Uh, now that all sounds well and good, and I was like, this is brilliant. It's going to be so easy to just do it. Uh, except the fact that I'm going to have stuff like the ability to, to run like uh, a median over a set of time, so you can hit my API, basically you call a thing, say like, give me the market median for this market from this time to this time. Now that's gonna take a while, it can't happen immediately because like, you gotta do things and stuff. There's, got, there's many bits they gotta flip and whatever. So I was like, you know what's a brilliant idea, I've been thinking in the back of my head, okay, so more context, and I'm sure most of you are gonna realize this, I really don't like async away, it's shit. Um, that's just a fact, that's not, a, that's not an opinion, that's, no, sorry. Uh, anyway. <coughs> I'm not a big fan of it, especially because uh, if you go like, you know, x equals a promise for x for something, y equals a promise for something, and then you go like return x plus y, it'll explode obviously because you can't add two promises together. 
you have to go await x, await y, or whatever, and then you <coughs> often, get, not always you don't have to do this, but you often get into a situation where x and y, like x has to finish, and then y will start, and then y has to finish, and you can't like parallelize all this stuff. And I was like, why don't you just make the language, like, if you're going to go to the, the, the effort of destroying the language with async await, you may as well destroy it to the point where all, like the entire AST just <laughs> resolves eventual values, so that you can just take it like an eventual, and an eventual, and use the plus operator, and that just res like turns into an addition eventual. Yeah. And so, I mean, it seems, whatever. But they're like, no, it couldn't possibly make it good. Um, <laughs> Anyway, I was like, it can't be that hard, surely. So I, um, it's not. It's actually not that hard. I, I uh, switched it. Where did it go? There. Uh, I rewrote Presh the other day to be fully internally asynchronous, so that all. Oh, Jeez, this is terrible. Uh, oh, it's too small. I know. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now it's useless. That's all right. We'll figure it out. Uh, this is just some shit that you don't need to worry about. So here we go. This is Presh. Uh, <laughs> So you can see there's a function here called load data. Uh, it's going squiggly because I can't spell apparently. Whatever. Uh, it's this is an asynchronous. Well, that's not. That sounds terrible. It's a function that returns an eventual basically. So load data equal. Um, you can see how it's in here. Load data. So it returns a righto because I mean, um, and it makes a call to cpjax, which is. Am I running out of time already? <sighs> Shit. <laughs> Uh, I'll go really fast. Whatever it does, an, it does an AJAX request. Um, it does this stuff. Whatever it returns an eventual. Cool. So this here returns a token that is an eventual token um, that gets passed directly into what looks like a synchronous function filter, which it is a synchronous function effectively. Um, but it because this the way this this language works, every single token is effectively returns an asynchronous result. So things like plus. It, rather than, like I said, like I said before, if you put the plus operator into eventuals, it just creates an eventual operator that adds them eventually. So here you go. This is like get users with company. So I call get users with company create, and I go add company to the users. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I don't have variables in Presh because state and you know. So anyway, uh, I go add company, load data companies, great companies. At this point, companies hasn't actually loaded yet. Um, because that's an eventual argument. That argument isn't actually resolved yet, but it will be at some point. But you can use it before it is resolved inside the function. So down here, it filters through load data people. So right now, companies is in flight. This function has already run before that comes back. This is in flight. Filter gets, uh, actually filter's gonna be a top level function. So it will actually wait to run that until it's, all of its arguments are ready to go. Once they're ready to go, it'll run filter which will return an, uh, uh, an array of eventual filtered values, which will be eventually mapped over <laughs> with person, which may be resolved, but probably who knows. And then it creates an object um, using the uh, object fill, like, you know, the object literal, you know, where you take an object and you put like an, and you say, hey, become that object, but with more stuff. So that's, this here can be an eventual value that gets eventually filled into the object that eventually results in the object with that filled in. And then you say company will be there, which is going to be find companies, which by the way isn't, maybe it's there, who knows? And it'll be, it'll be there later. Uh, and then I've got a log in here. Oh look, there's a log. Hey cool, that's why there's logging down here, whatever. So you can see that's actually doing that now. I don't know why that's doing that. <laughs> Let's just ignore that for now, but whatever. And then. So, oh, you know what would be really way better is to show you what the data looks like, rather than be like, it works, and then you're like, great, I don't, you give me no context, this is terrible. Uh, people, uh, there's, there are three people, all the names are extremely gender neutral, uh, and then there are two companies, which uh, there's Google and there's Patient Zero, which is who I work for, um, and you'll see that I've gone, cool, load the companies, load the people, filter the people who have an employer, map through those, add the company based on find through the companies, make sure that their name and their employer matches up. Ta-da! Asynchronous result! Woo! <laughs> yeah, so the takeaway is that you'll be able to trade and lose money in cryptos. <laughs> That's all. Oh, any questions? I think I'm understand that eventually. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs>
I'll call back to you on that. <laughs> yeah. So it's effectively the lazy functional programming language. You've made it pure lazy. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. So I mean, that was one of the things because, like, you know, the whole being able to take someone else's code and run it on your server. You obviously you inherently don't trust anything that comes to your server. I wanted to make it pure because I don't want to have you know massive memory leaks and whatever. So uh, theoretically, this is really hard to to do memory leaks in, but then again, I've been known to be impressive at making memory leaks in the past, so I guess we'll find out. Um, you can, I'm pretty sure you can destroy it really simply, because um, there's stuff like I can go um, one to two, which results in one and two, that's pretty simple. What if I go infinity, it goes broken. <laughs> uh, I need to fix that one. Um, Hopefully I fixed that before I release my app and you guys sign up for it and trash my server because it does run on the server. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yep. How does it handle like the does it handle like uh, dependencies, data dependencies? So it'll like asynchronous to resolve stuff oh, yeah. in parallel up until it gets to a point where it requires the results. Yes, so because it uses writer under the covers, uh, all values are evaluated as they are required in the order that they are required in, it's inherent. Um, so let's say I have, uh, I don't know, let's just go load data equal, what does that do? Uh, it doesn't, I've crashed it, what the hell? Oh, dot JS, of course, learn to write code. Um, yep, cool. So here's my people. And then I can square brace off that the second one, oh, the third one, sorry. Cool, there's the third one. Their employer is PZ. So I can then go like load data. Um, what did I have? Um, and I can go um, find over that where. So now if you have a look in the network tab and I clear that out and I do a thing because it just works on, it's not smart. Bam, bam, people, people see that there's a problem there, see that bug, which is that it, uh, it doesn't remember people on the second load. So that's inside of, because this is happening inside of Find, there are two companies, it loads people twice. Um, but it does, and I mean, I, I realise that I'm trying to prove something good here, but I'm proving how bad it is. But it does load <laughs> companies and people in parallel. It, it loads people before it's loaded companies, even though it needs companies, but it just, yeah, whatever. Um, so that's actually why in my original example, the reason why it loaded stuff twice, that's actually why I um, added a, an inner function, is because there's no variables in Presh. You can effectively create um, like lexical variables, uh, identifiers, value identifiers by just grouping functions together, and you can just build a, a big list of um, data like that. So that way I'm only loading companies once down here, and it, it doesn't wait to run this. It actually runs that before companies is loaded, but I only have one reference to it. And because Rhino is an eventual that returns the result, uh, no matter how many times you ask for it, it's the same result, it only loads it once. <sighs> Does that answer your question? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yep. Good question. What happens if shit doesn't work. What if you like load data? Yeah, that makes sense. That's people. What if you like load people of there? Bang! Um, I just haven't handled this very well. But uh, in the let me go to the code. That's probably a better way to look. Holy Jesus! <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'm using eval because I'm cool. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, yeah. Okay. So here you go. So the results are of a fresh. So running. And just slam that text content straight into an evaluator. Uh, running that is, gives you a result, and it either has a direct error, so that's like it couldn't parse it, couldn't like it, couldn't parse it. Um, evaluate if it was like the very top level, maybe it would happen, but usually evaluate errors happen through the eventual. So the value will be a righto, which is just an eventual or just a callback you can call, and you'll either get an error or results. Now I don't actually know why 
it's not passing that there is, I do know exactly why for some reason. Cool. So let's uh, reload this, paste that there, and there you go, 404. So, yeah. <laughs> yep. okay, so now for his next trick. <laughs>